Okay, class, today we're going to combine functions through addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and composition of functions. So I'm going to go through a quick review. Um, so here we want to multiply the functions g times f of x. So we're going to multiply g of x times f of x. So my g is x over x plus 1. I'm going to multiply it by f of x, which is 1 over x. And my x is cancel, so I'm left with 1 over x plus 1. Um, so that is my g of g times f. Okay, so g times f of x. g f of x. Okay, then it says then evaluate when x equals negative 3. So if we want to find g times f of negative 3, I'm going to plug in negative 3 for x. So it's 1 over negative 3 plus 1 which is 1 over negative 2. There is an alternate method to do this. Um, we can find f of negative 3 by plugging negative 3, which is 1 over negative 3. And we can find g of negative 3. So I plug in negative 3 in two places. Negative 3, negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 3 over negative 2 or 3 halves, and we ultimately want to find g times f of negative 3. So g times f of negative 3. That's just g of negative 3 times f of negative 3. And g of negative 3 is 3 halves, and f of negative 3 is minus 1 third. The 3's cancel, and I'm with minus 1 half. So two ways. Either multiply and then plug in, or plug in then multiply. It's the same. Um, it's about the same amount of work either way. Okay, let's move on to the next problem. So for this problem, we're given a graph, and we want to find f plus g of 2. So here's a graph of f of x, and here's a graph of g of x. So we're going to use the property that this is f of 2 plus g of 2. So f of 2, so here is my f function, and here is 2. f of 2 is this value here. So f of 2 equals 2. So this is 2. g of 2, well here's 2. g of 2 would be here, this value. So g of 2 is negative 3, so it's 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. Okay. The next one, so we want g minus f of 0. So this is g of 0 minus f of 0. So we can find g of 0. I'll change colors so that we can see the difference. Um, g of 0, so my input is 0. g of 0 is here, so g of 0 equals 2. f of 0, so my input is 0. f of 0 is here. f of 0 is minus 2, so it's minus a negative 2. 2 plus 2 or 4. And that is how you add and subtract graphically. Okay, on the next one we are going to do division. So for the division, um, we do need to pay attention to um, the domain. So we are going to look at that. Okay, so our f of x is the square root of x minus 2, and we want to find f over g of x. So my f of g, f over g of x, so I put my f of x on top which is the square root of x minus 2. g of x goes in the bottom, the square root of 9 minus x squared. Nothing can cancel, so that is my f over g of x. Okay, so if anything could cancel, you'd want to cross them off. The domain, that's the trickier part. That's really what's new. Okay, so when you want to look at overall the domain, you have to look at all possible x's that you can go in. So for the numerator, um, you can take the square root of 0, and it's okay to have 0 in the numerator. So we could have the number 2 or bigger numbers. So for the numerator, we know that x has to be greater than or equal to 2. Oh, sorry, not 0, 2. And it can equal 2 because we can take the square root of 0 to 0. We can't take the square root of negative numbers, which is why this number has to be bigger than 2. So for the denominator, so in the denominator, we, we know we can't divide by 0. So we can't divide by 0. And then we also know that we have to take the square root of a positive number, or 0, but it can't be 0. So it tells me my x squared, um, if it's 3 or negative 3, I plug in, that's okay. Um, but it can't be any 
number bigger than 3 or smaller than negative 3 because we want x squared to be smaller than 9. So we're subtracting a positive number. So that tells me that my, um, for my g of x, the domain, my x, has to be greater than or equal to negative 3 or less than or equal to 3. However, since it's in the denominator, if I plug in 3, I do 9 minus 9, which is 0. I'd be taking the square root of 0. You can take the square root of 0, but it resides in the denominator. So in reality, um, since it's in the denominator, we know that it has to be strictly greater than um, negative 3, and less than negative 3. So to find the domain overall, it's where they overlap. And if you look at this on a number line, so if I have negative 3, 0, 2, and 3 on a number line, and we look at everywhere where they overlap, x is greater than or equal to 2, tells me it's closed dot and everywhere over there. x is between negative 3 and 3, not including it, so it's in open circles, which tells me they overlap just right in here between 2 and 3 with a closed dot on 2 and an open circle on 3, or an interval notation, 2 comma 3. Remember we used the square to indicate it's and equal to, and the round saying not equal to. So the domain um, of f of f over g is 2 comma 3, which um, this is how your book is going to write the answer, but an interval, um, or sorry, inequality notation is greater than or equal to or less than 3. Okay, so this is really what I want you to concentrate on is understanding the domain. Okay, next problem has to do with composition of functions. So we have this new notation that f composed of g of x or f composed of g is f of g of x. So this is how we wrote it in algebra 2. Okay, and so for the domain, when we look at the domain, we have to look at the domain of everything, the f and the g and the final answer. Okay, so we're going to use the graph to find um, f composed of g of 1. So f composed of g of 1. This is the same thing as f of g of 1. Okay, so we're going to find g of 1. So here's 1. g of 1 is minus 1. So this is f of minus 1. So now our input is minus 1. We go to the f graph at minus 1. My f is minus 3. So this is minus 3. Okay, so for number 2, g composed of f of minus 2, g composed of f is g of f of minus 2. So my input is minus 2, and I plug that into the f function. So I plug minus 2 into my f function, and I get minus 1. So it's g of minus 1. So I go to my g function, find my input of minus 1, and my output is 3. Okay, so that is graphically how we do composition. So now we're going to do a little algebraically finding the composition. So for part A, we want to find f composed of g. Remember that this is f of g of x, right? f then g in the other notation, f then g. So I'm going to replace g of x with 2x. So this is f of 2x. Now I'm going to plug 2x into my f function. Okay, so everywhere I saw an x, now I'm going to have a 2x, so it's 3 times 2x squared plus 2. So all I did was I replaced my x with a 2x, because I'm finding f of 2x. So everything where there was highlighted is now a 2x. And then I have to continue simplifying. So this is 3, 2x squared, I have to square the 2, which is 4, square the x squared plus 2. Now I can distribute. So this is 12x squared plus 2. And that is f of g. Part b is g composed of f, which is g of f of x. So now my f of x is my input, and f of x is um, 3x squared plus 2. So this is g of 3x squared plus 2. And I'm going to plug this into my g of x equation. So now I have this is my input. So g of that. So I replace x with 3x squared plus 2. So it's 2 times x, which is 3x squared plus 2. Distribute. 
and I have 6x squared plus 4. Okay, so that is part B. C says f composed of f. Well, that is f of f of x, which looks kind of strange, but f of x equals um, 3x squared plus 2, so I'm going to replace that. So this is f of 3x squared plus 2. Okay, so now that is my input, the 3x squared plus 2, and I'm going to replace that into my f function. So I'm putting 3x squared plus 2 in for x. So this is 3 times 3x squared plus 2 plus 2, because I replaced x with 3x squared plus 2. Going to distribute 9x squared plus 6 plus 2, which is 9x... Oops, I forgot to square it. So, back up a little bit here. I apologize. Um, it's 3 x squared. I forgot my squared. So 3x squared plus 2, which is 3 times 3x squared plus 2 times 3x squared plus 2 plus 2. Squared means write it out twice. I'm just going to use the FOIL method. So it's 3 times 3 times 3 is 9x to the 4. And that gives me 6x squared plus 6x squared which is 12x squared, and 2 times 2 is 4, plus 2. Now I can distribute my 3, which is 27x to the 4th, plus 36x squared. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. And that is my answer for C. So again, we wanted to plug 3x squared plus 2 into my f function. So I forgot my squared. So it's 3 times your input squared, 3 times my input squared, plus 2. Okay, so for the last problem tonight, D says find G composed of F of 2. And we did problems like this already. Um, there are two ways you can do it. We can simply just go straight forward, G of F of 2. So find F of 2 which means plug 2 into my f equation. So that's g of, I plug 2 in for my x, 3 times 2 squared plus 2, which is g of 2 squared is 4, times 3 is 12, plus 2 is 14. So I need to find g of 14. So now I plug 14 into my g function, which is 2 times 14, or 28. So that is the first way. The other way, I'll change my color. Um, the other way to do it, you know what G composed of F is. We already found that. That is 6x squared plus 4 from part C. So we want to find G composed of F of 2. You can just plug 2 into this equation. So G composed of F of 2, just plug 2 into G composed of F, which is this. So it's 6 times 2 squared plus 4. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 6 is 24. 24 plus 4 is 28. So again, you can compose um, and plug in each one, or you can compose and then plug in. Two ways to do it. Um, so that is all section 1.5 on composition. So you can start doing the problems from the book and have a good night.